Hey there, welcome back to our series on whether you can build a marketplace application in Bubble. This is video two in our series. If you haven't seen the first one, I suggest you go back and watch the intro. What we'll be covering in this video is one of the must have features, primary core functionality for any marketplace app, and that is search and how flexible we can get with search uh, in Bubble. I, I have a demo page here that we'll jump into, show you a couple things as far as common functionality goes and point out areas that you can really customize to make your own. Now, if you're new around here, my name is Gabby. I am the co-founder co of Coaching No Code Apps, and we help non-technical entrepreneurs build custom apps to launch their app-based business or grow their existing businesses all without code. All right, so I'm gonna jump into this page and first give you a preview of how this page works and then we'll dig into the back end and see how it was put together. So this is gonna cover a lot of the most common functionality that you're gonna find. Keep in mind, this is not the be all end all of what you can do. You can absolutely do more, um, but I'm trying to touch on just the most common functionality also so that I can uh, you know, mention areas that you can get more custom uh, with. So. We have a pretty common, you know, traditional uh, layout as far as where everything is for search. We've got our filter bar um, at the top so we can refine our result list. And then at the bottom, we have our results. With a marketplace type of application, depending on what the content is, you know, you might have different ways of visualizing the results. So you might just have a list like I have over here on the left. You might just have a map, no map at all if there are no locations involved. Um, there might be users involved if you want to show images of the people, the, you know, the service providers, the sellers, whatever it might be. In my case here, uh, my example is a marketplace of home and apartment listings. Okay, so it's helpful to be able to see things in a list also side by side with a map because we want to know where the homes are. Now I'm going to be toggling back and forth between my page that I built here in Bubble and uh, this sample search in Zillow. Uh, which does a very, very similar thing because I want to show you how you can replicate this functionality um, that, you know, a, a big uh, real estate uh, application like Zillow or Realtor um, or any of those other ones that aren't coming to mind right now, uh, you know, how they all function. They're all very similar. They've got a filter bar. They've got a map. You can, um, you know, click on points in a map and you can see all the details about a property uh you know, like this, it's coming up here in a pop-up. We can do the same thing in Bubble as well. Uh, this one's taking a little bit to load. I think there's probably a number of images involved. Uh, yeah, there we go. All right, so let me jump back up over to my page and I'm just gonna take you through what I've done here. So at the top, we have a couple of filters here for first, uh, the type of property. So I have a very small data set uh, as an example here, seven properties and each of them are a different type. They are either for rent, for sale, or they're already sold. And you can actually see in my, my results list here, I'm indicating which one those are, for rent, for sale, or sold. So I have them all checked, it's gonna show me all of them. If I deselect for rent, it will in real time update my results and filter those out. I also have a search by location, which is really important for something, you know, we're, we're working with addresses. Let me turn this one back on so I have more results to work with. And uh, if I search by location, I'm just gonna search for an origin address, a starting point, and then some number um, for some integer here to search the radius around it in, in miles. So for example, let's do, uh, let's do this location here. I'm just gonna copy, I'm just gonna copy from this, type it in, three, four, three, eight. Notice how this is an autocomplete of locations. This is hooking into uh, Google Places API. This is something that's actually Built in with Bubble, um, you do need to connect with your own API keys, but it is something that is almost out of the box for you, which is really nice. Uh, let's see here. So let's select that one. Notice that my filter results now completely went away because I don't have a radius indicated yet. So if I type in 10, it's gonna show me all of the results because all of these things are within 10 miles of this location. Uh, if I take this down to maybe three, a little less, I think it knocked out two results. Okay, so again, real-time results for the location search. Also with this autocomplete, I can search uh, more general locations. So for example, um, just you know New York as a city, uh, it will centralize uh, you know, some center point on the city, some center zip code for that. But 
you can also put points of interest. So if I do, you know, Empire State Building, it'll find the address for that as well. So very, very flexible uh, location search that we have there. So I'm going to remove that for now. Uh, now we also have another really common type of filter, which is um, a, a range, a scale uh, of some sort. In this case, a price range. So I've got a minimum and a maximum, and I want to indicate, uh, I want to find listings where the price or the rent falls within that range. Okay, so I've got it defaulting to zero to 300,000, and we can see the uh, the the rent and then the sale price listed there. So we have a couple. Um, so if I move this down to, um, or let me move up the range up higher, right? So now I removed everything that's in the for rent. As a user who's uh, searching through properties, I'm likely going to be searching just things for rent or just for sale. So what I've done is if I remove you know, for sale and sold, and I'm looking at just things for rent, then my my uh, scale changes, right? So here, my max is set to 5,000. Um, obviously, I can raise that. There are properties that are going to be higher rents. Um, but this way, it's a little bit more relevant to uh, the, the type of property that I have isolated here. So you can create conditions to have your filters respond to that so that it's more user friendly, it's more convenient for your users. Okay, so I'm gonna turn these back on and it's gonna reset my, my scale here. So now I can go up higher. I've got my max set to a million. Um, but this is also a real time search. As I shift this around, it's going to change my results. And notice that um, the map is also reflective of the list on the left. Anything that shows up here, those are the only markers that are gonna show on the right as well. Okay, so I'll just open that up for now. Okay, the last filter that I have here is to show my bookmark. So that's another feature I'm going to go into a little bit, a little bit more here, which is favoriting, starring, bookmarking uh, listings unique to the user, right? So I want to keep track of things that I like so that I can come back to them later. I believe, let me go to my page two here. I might not have any favorites right now, so let's create one. Um, I'm going to favorite this uh, second property. I'm going to click on my bookmark. What I've actually done is created a, uh, uh, an input here for me to save a note. Again, unique to me. Other users would not see this note. So I can say, um, you need to contact the property manager on Monday morning, something like that. And I'll save my note along with my bookmark in general. Okay, so if I turn bookmarks only, uh, on, then it filters it down just to my bookmarks. And I can still manipulate, um, you know, let's say I had 50 bookmarks, uh, I can still filter those with the same uh, inputs that I have up here at the top to help myself find things. Okay, now if I wanted to, you know, edit my note, I can always click on the bookmark again, edit this here, save it, or I can remove the bookmark. Very user uh, friendly here to, to make this more valuable for them. All right, so those are the filters at the top. Again, the, that's, that's the tip of the iceberg. You can do many more types of filters, um, tags, keyword searches. Uh, if you wanna have like a drop down of certain items, other categories, categories, subcategories, you know, all of that sort of thing, all the normal stuff that you would find, um, you know, in, in general marketplace searches, uh, which we can see here, right? This is the type of item and we can see this the way that Zillow has done it. These are kind of top level categories and then they've got their subcategories. You can absolutely do that in bubble, including this type of design, right? I've chosen to do kind of everything is visible at all times. What they're doing is sort of hiding some of these things. So you click on the, the, the filter and then it'll show this additional window so you can refine that further, right? So this shows you your price range. Maybe you have some preset minimums and maximums that they just click on. You can absolutely do that um, on this platform. All right, so let me jump over to this lower section here. I do have a sorting uh, uh, option here. So by default, it's sorting by price uh, where it is ascending. So the lowest price is gonna be at the top of the list. And I can click on this to reverse that. You can see how it changed my results like that. Now, currently I can't change what I'm sorting by because the way that I've set this up is I, I uh, and giving them the option to sort by price or by distance from my search location. But I don't have a search location right now. So that is disabled to toggle over to the distance sort. 
uh, I don't want to confuse the users, allowing them to sort by distance if there's literally no distance to calculate from to begin with. So I'm trying to make it um, you know, more intuitive for them. So the moment I do a location, I'm just going to grab this address again. Okay, and I'm going to open up my, my radius so I get everything. Now that I have a location in there, now this becomes enabled and I can click on it and switch my sort to a distance sort. And because I'm sorting by distance, my result here is showing me the calculated distance of each individual listing from my uh, search location. Uh, so this is another conditional thing. If I search, uh, excuse me, sort by price, the, oh, actually, the, the, it, it's not by the sort, it is by the uh, value here. The fact that I have a location in there is going to calculate for me. Okay, all good. So anyway, so we're sorting by distance. Um, this location is eight miles away from this lo the, the origin location. If I toggle the sort in the other direction, you can see that my origin location is actually the first in the list because it is itself it's zero miles away from itself. Um, and then we go up in distance like that. So that type of feature, this kind of um, sorting by a calculated value starts to dip into more complex expressions, more complex formulas all doable, all, all very possible, and uh, works really well. Um, you can obviously see here that we're showing the number of results. We can do uh, paging systems. So if I have many, many pages of results, I can cycle through uh, forward and backward. You can even do more elaborate paging systems where you have you know, the list of numbers, kind of how Google does it, um, where you can jump around. I'm on page one. I want to jump to page 10. You can definitely do that as well. Okay. Now let's look uh, further down here at the interactivity of our results. Um, this can be as interactive or not, you know, it's completely up to you. So starting with the list over here, you can see as I'm hovering over these items, it's coloring the background a little bit to help me see what, what I'm hovering over a little bit more. Um, if I open up, if I click on the arrow icon, I'm showing a pop-up, very, very basic design, but obviously, I mean, this is a blank canvas, uh, throw whatever you want in here, design it however you want. Uh, but the point is, is that you can show a pop-up, which is very common. I actually, uh, we, we saw that at the beginning of this video with Zillow to display additional information. You have more breathing room to show a photo gallery. I'm just showing one, but you can have, you know, multiple images that you can cycle through um, buttons to uh, trigger another action, a contact form to reach out to the property manager or the, the property owner, the agent, whoever it is, uh, and basically show all the details about that listing that you selected. If I go over to another one, it's the same element on my page, but it's just changing the data source so that we see something else here. Um, and we can do this from the map as well. I've got it from the list, but we can trigger that same kind of pop-up directly from the map. Right now, what I have in the map is if I click on the icon, it's just going to show me the address. But notice that if I click on the icon, um, it's going to highlight. Let's see, I think I'm on the other page. Yeah, you see here how it's highlighting the one that I've selected um, or this one highlighting there again to just call things out a little bit more. You can take this further, right? You can border, you can change the color of the border to make it stand out more. Like I said, you can show a pop up. Um, even in the map, you have control over what the icons look like. You can make these primary images for the listings, the icons themselves. Um, you can choose to not show this little title window if you want when you click on it. There's a lot of customization that you can go into the map. This is a Google map element that Bubbles got for you, uh, and you have quite a bit of control over that as well. Let's see, um, what else do we want to show here? I think that's everything as far as the functionality that I built. You guys, I built this in like an hour and a half um, <laughs> to put this all together with uh, like eight results, uh, just following some best practices and, and uh, you know common layout designs that we see in marketplace searches. Certainly don't need to reinvent the wheel here, but I tried to put a little bit of um, the most common things so you can see what's possible. So now I'm going to go over into the editor a little bit so you can see kind of what went into making this page happen. How was I able to put it together so fast? Well, there's really not a lot of logic that I had to put together. So much of this is out of the box for you. It's really just a matter of how you want to lay things out in, in the design. Uh, so first, let's start with the data structure. Really important because um, how you organize your data, how I organize my listing data, will really dictate how the rest of the functionality happens, how the searches um, work, right? How do I query my database? How do I filter things? Well, I have to have 
the data saved properly. Each of the fields need to be identified properly. A price is a number, an address is, is a location, right? Um, we have to be able to save images. And, um, and that way we can also plot them on the map properly. So in my bubble database, I have uh, a listing table. This is where I store all of my basic information. You can see here's my, uh, my, my list of records, the addresses, the photos, the prices, a quick little description or title, and then I have this tied to a, a type. Um, I also have, for this particular thing, a separate record for the, the favoriting, the bookmarking, because the user needs to keep that unique to them, right? So that needs to be a separate thing in the database that basically combines the listing with the user and then possibly a note. Uh, by the way, notice that when I opened up my um, pop-up that I displayed the user's note here as well. And if there is no note or you know they didn't favorite it, it's just going to default to say none. Again, you have all the control in the world about how you show this. I could choose to not show this little notes text if there was no note or if it wasn't favorited. I could also have the functionality to bookmark and unbookmark from this pop-up as well. You know, really what this comes down to is passing data around your page, uh, for, you know, from one element to another. What I'm not doing here, but what I do want to just say so you're aware that it, it is possible to do this, is I can click on, I can select a listing and actually navigate to a separate page. If I choose to have a separate listing detail page where there's much more information, I just, I just want a, a dedicated space for that rather than in a pop-up. Maybe that starts to feel too cramped. You can definitely do that. Click on something, you navigate away, and you pass that information over so you're looking at the right um, listing. So my, uh, my data already went through that. So let's take a look at the design, okay? So this is on one single page. Uh, you can see here at the top, I have various uh, inputs to control my filters, okay? So I am using, um, I think, one plugin really for this entire experience, which is uh, a little UI element here to get that uh, checkbox selected. I didn't really have to do very much to design this. It was pretty out of the box, which is really nice. Um, so I've got my inputs to do my geographic places search. I have my slider for the prices. I'm able to dictate the minimum value, the maximum value. I can dictate uh, what the default value is if I want. I've got a toggle here. Um, and all of these inputs will affect my listings result. All of this goes into my search. That's why it's a real-time response. Bubble's just constantly checking, okay, do the listings match these parameters? Yes or no? It either gets filtered in or out. Uh, and of course, our sorting functions as well. Uh, the map, the map is also highly customizable. I went with a you know slight blue map style, but you can change this to lots of different styles there, uh, which is you know fun to go through. I'll leave it back on my blue water. Um, and you can see that the data source of this map is actually pulling directly from the repeating group listing. So there's a lot of strategy too that goes into building a search feature like this to make things efficient, to make it perform well. You don't want to do more searches on your page, more queries of your database than you really need. So the more you can consolidate uh, your data sources, the better. Okay, and um, if we take a look at the workflow uh, area of this page, Check this out. There's really not a lot going on uh, with the workflows to make this functionality happen. Really, um, it's super basic things like my arrows going, let's see, this is, the, this is the left arrow and the right arrow to show the next page and the previous page. I didn't have to calculate anything. It's just kind of built into the behavior of the repeating group element, the element that shows a list of things. Um, this is my expand arrow, and that's what's going to show that pop-up and pass the data over to the pop-up so we, you know, so the pop-up can show the right information. Um, and then my sorting function to just change direction uh, of the sort, ascending to descending and back. It's really it, just a couple of like visual interactions that's happening here in the workflows. Um, obviously, this page has nothing to do with creating the listings or anything like that, but the purpose of this video today is really to show you um, you know, what you can do with search and that this can actually come together pretty quickly. Uh, if you if you understand, you know, if, if you have uh, seen other marketplace searches with certain layouts, use that as inspiration, right? You don't need to reinvent the wheel with 
um, specific layouts. Get your users the information in a clean and clear way. Make sure that they're oriented. Be consistent um, in your designs. Uh, and then, you know, focus on being able to organize your data in the database uh, effectively, right? So that's, that's really one of the more important things that often gets overlooked is how you store this information in your database. Okay, so just looking at this real quick, uh, a listing record in my database, we, we want to specify that an address is a geographic address. If it wasn't, it would be harder to plot it on that map, right? A photo is an image so that we can display an image or potentially an image gallery, price will allow us to do math with prices, if I, especially for the filters. I want to find listings that are greater than this price or less than this price or in between this numerical range. So you don't want to save a price as a text, right? Um, and then my type is pulling, it's actually linked to uh, an option set, which is a feature that Bubble has to help you manage just kind of static lists of choices. Okay, everybody, that's pretty much it. That was a quick look at, uh, you know, a, a, a combination of uh, common marketplace search features. This is the tip of the iceberg. You can get way more complex with uh, this functionality. You know, you can have lots of different other filter choices. Uh, if you think of something like Amazon, where on their sidebar, there's tons of different things that depending on what it is you're looking at or maybe what other filters you've chosen, you can change things in real time to give the users the right list of options. Um, and they can all work in combination with each other. No matter what the user chooses, um, everything can work together. And there's not all, a ton of work on your part to have to anticipate all the different scenarios. It's a matter of uh, making things more dynamic uh, and you know, uh, sort of anticipating that there will be a combination of features rather than hard coding every possible scenario. All right. And manipulating your lists, you know, when you're working with search, you're working with lists uh, and the performance behind uh, querying a database with a lot of items is really important. And um, again, the way you organize it in your database is going to have a big effect on that. All right. So if you want to dive deeper into building a marketplace application, Check out our free extended training at coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop and stick with us for the next video in this series, which is going to cover payments. We're going to talk about how to uh, integrate with a payment gateway uh, and how to manage payments between buyers and sellers, taking a fee, doing delayed payments, lots of good stuff there. So we can't wait to see you there and uh, have a great day.